Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be painting a master of possession from start to finish. But first of all I want to say a huge thank you to my YouTube channel sponsors Goblin Gaming who sent me the Shadow Spear box set out for review. If you check the description box below you'll find a direct link to their web store and every time you purchase something from this link it greatly helps my YouTube channel so if you are buying from Goblin Gaming please use the link in the description box below. I have to confess guys this is not my best tutorial, I've had to cut a good chunk of footage as uh, some of the camera work was out of focus uh, when I was painting in my living room because the um, clouds kept coming in and going out and rather than uh, use my lamp and shut the curtains I tried to bear with it and the footage was just very poor. Uh, but anyway um, there's still some good footage uh, in here and hopefully uh, you'll pick up a few tips and tricks. Trips? <laughs> I don't think it's going to take you anywhere, guys. Tricks along the way. Uh, and as always, guys, this is going to be a long video, so go grab yourselves a nice hot drink or maybe an ice cold beer, and we'll get started with the tutorial. I'll start off by priming using Outclad 2's Lacquer Primer White. The reason I use Alclad primers is they're really tough and durable but yet they spray on the miniature super thin and leave a really nice smooth surface for subsequent layers of paint to go on. Um, I have to add though that uh, it's very harmful if inhaled so please make sure you're well ventilated and wearing a respirator and also you need to have an airbrush with PTFE solvent proof packing seals if you don't have these type of seals in your airbrush the paint will actually damage lesser quality airbrushes now we're going to use Games Workshop's Mechanica Standard Grey now the reason I'm using grey and not black is if you actually use black it's hard to actually work up to uh, get your highlights and your shadows from black as it's an extreme colour so what I prefer to do is work from a mid-tone grey and then I can work up the shadows and we can start looking for a convincing looking black. I'm spraying here at about 20 to 18 psi and I'm just working at 2 to 3 inches away. I'm not worried about overspray at all on any areas that aren't supposed to be black as they'll just be painted uh, later on anyway. Now we're going to create some deep shading but it's more so going to work as a tint through the airbrush. We're going to change the colour hue from a medium grey to a very very dark almost black using two subsequent layers of Norn Oil. So after I'd let the first layer of Norn Oil dry I come back in with a second layer of Norn Oil and then you can really start to see the armour panels pop out and see the shadows starting to form on that armour. Here you can see that I'm laying down the second coat of Norn Oil as the first coat was still too light on the power armour. Now I'm coming in with Vallejo Game Air Black that's been thinned one to one with water. Now this paint is already quite thin and airbrush ready straight out the bottle but I wanted to make sure that it goes on super thin onto the model as I wanted to create some extreme shadows on the actual miniature. I'm working here at about 13 to 14 psi and I'm getting really close and I'm just adding tiny amounts of that Vallejo Game Air Black.
Now we're going to start spraying Vallejo metal color copper and it's important to note that the copper color that we're spraying on the miniature here is going to be uh, painted on just the skull areas and the ramp area of the staff that he's holding. After allowing the copper colour to thoroughly dry, we're coming in with Games Workshop Shade Seraphim Sepia. Here I'm using Vallejo Game Air White to go over all of the flame areas that were covered in the previous painting stage in copper. I'm just slowly building up those um, white uh, flames and we're going to uh, paint some subsequent layers of paint over the white to try and get a fairly authentic looking flame effect. We're going to start off by using Vallejo Game Air Gold Yellow. It's important to note that we're going to start from the very, very brightest colour, which will be at the very bottom of the flames, and then we'll eventually end up with black right at the very tips of the flames. So you'll see a colour transition start to appear from very bright at the bottom of the flames, where they uh, start from, to the very tips of the flames being black. Now we're going to start working a little further up the flames using Games Workshop's Air Paint Troll Slayer Orange.
Now we're going to use Vallejo Game Air Bloody Yet Bloody Red and we're going to paint the very tops of the flames. Now we're going to start painting the cloak that the Master of Possession is wearing. We're going to use Games Workshop's base paint, Corn Red. This has been thinned down and um, it's better to paint in two thin layers than in one thick layer as it will leave brush stroke marks behind. Now we're going to use Vallejo Game Air Bloody Red and we're going to start highlighting the folds. How we do this is by working very close with the airbrush and we're going to focus on the very top surfaces of the folds and leave all the corn red behind in the recesses. Unfortunately I've not got the filming of this but after placing down the bloody red I went into the very extreme recesses of the cloak with Vallejo Game Air Black and I placed uh, the black in all of the recesses of the cloak. Now we're going to use Vallejo, sorry, Games Workshop, I should say, Zandri Dust. And we're going to be painting it onto the skull mask that the Master of Possession's wearing. Games Workshop Agrax Earthshade is going to be washed onto the uh, mask that the Master of Possession is wearing and it's also going to be washed onto the base as well. A shabti bone is going to be used to highlight the mask that the master of possessions wearing.
here you can see that I'm washing the mask using seraphim sepia Games Workshop's Morn Fang Brown is painted onto the gun holster and also the staff and on the pelt that he's wearing across his shoulders. Games Workshop Screaming Skull is being dry brushed onto the very bottom of the cloak and on the base and also those skulls that are um, hanging from the cloak. Here I'm using Games Workshop Screaming Skull and very final highlights of Vallejo Game Air White onto the mask that the Master of Possession is wearing. I have to um, go over a few things that unfortunately I didn't get recorded on the camera and that was hard edge highlighting of the power armour that was using Games Workshop Celestial Grey also uh, I added a very very thin glaze of Games Workshop's Mournfang Brown on the very bottom of the horns. And here we have our finished Master of Possessions. What a fantastic miniature this is. And to be honest, every single miniature in the Shadow Spear Boxer is really just amazing, guys. The Games Workshop design team and artists have done a wonderful job on their uh, products. So um, I just want to say once again a huge thank you to the guys over at Goblin Gaming. Please don't forget to check the description box down below for links to their web store. And if you are purchasing anything, it really greatly helps my YouTube channel. So thank you for that. Um, also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this tutorial. Apologies once again that it's not the best tutorial as some of the footage uh, was lost uh, because I'm just... An idiot and can't film to save uh, my life but uh, there you go uh, yeah so uh, thank you for very much for taking the time out of the day to watch this video and I'll catch you in the next one